In a matter of six weeks, Jeff Gordon took the championship points lead and ran. Six consecutive wins gapped him from the field, and with the odds heavily in Gordon's favor, it seems to be a matter of time before he wins his first championship. But there's still four races left, and in a highly publicized move, Charlotte Motor Speedway track promoter Humpy Wheeler has put out a bounty to end Jeff Gordon's streak. Wheeler states that any man who can win the race besides Gordon will receive an additional 200 grand on top of the already high purse. To pile on the bounty hype, the race will be moved to a night race for the first time to showcase the track's new lights after the One Hot Night spectacle that happened a few years ago. With an entry list as large as the Coca-Cola 600, the intensity is about to hit all new level. Dale Earnhardt wins the pole with Jeff Gordon to his outside. Winner of this race from two years ago, Jimmy Spencer lines up third, and fourth is the always aggressive Ernie Irvin. Jeff Gordon's owner Rick Hendrick pre-race expressed distaste in the bounty hype, stating, There's still four races left, and plenty of time for someone to take this title away from us. As the field begins the roll, and pace car pulls off, the field takes the green. Through the opening lap, it sorts out the Dale Earnhardt out front, with Jimmy Spencer and Bobby Hamilton trailing him behind him. With the urgency to try and claim the bounty, both men try taking Big E three wide in the turn three. The very next lap, Hamilton contracts behind Spencer to keep things civil, and only two wide through the corner. Quickly, three cars push through and pass Earnhardt, but their peacekeeping the file Earnhardt back is short-lived. Double file now down the front stretch, but then Earnhardt hand grenades in the one. Jeff Gordon tracking directly behind the ailing Earnhardt gets showered in oil and the event forces the 24 back from the lead 5. Bobby Hamilton leads the field now after the chaos of Earnhardt's failure subsides. The front 5 star racing behind Hamilton, giving him the ability to put some distance on them before losing the position to a zealous Jimmy Spencer. The Fords train the bottom and push past the GM brigade on the top. Quickly, Allison passes Spencer and begins to run away as well. Gordon during the scuffle is in 10th, putting up a futile fight against Humpy's bounty, and the top 5 know it. They're still dicing it up among one another. And lap after lap, they swap positions at the front back and forth repeatedly. Before the tango at the front could get any more dicey, the field detours to the pit lane for service. Teams stop and change tires, but in a credible turn of events, three of the top five have drastic issues on their pit stops. Allison's jack drops and wedges the tire under the fender, causing a 20 second stop longer than normal. Mark Martin ran over the air hose, and while backing up, he wrapped it around the front valence, making the situation even worse. And Bobby Hamilton stalled trying to get out of his stall and had a hard time firing his car back up. Before we can even sort out how that could play into the race, Ernie Irvin and Bill Elliott have a collision off of turn four that results in an innocent Ken Schrader being ripped apart at the start finish line. As the field takes the yellow, Jeffrey Bodine shreds his drive shaft, adding to the debris on the track and causing even more running order chaos. Through everything, Jimmy Spencer comes out on top with Rusty Wallace in second. The race is going to restart now with nine to go, and drivers like Ted Musgrave, Ward Burton, and Dale Jarrett are all eyeing Spencer and Wallace to claim the 200 grand. Jeff Gordon is remedied basically irrelevant, being 22nd after the caution flag scramble. Nine laps to go and the field goes back to green. Rusty sizes up Spencer, and in the three, he shoots the gap. Spencer leans to the top side and surrenders the preferred groove to Rusty. Musgrave from third aligns with Rusty, and is now prepared to truck former leader Spencer to the rear. Ward Burton now moves to third behind Musgrave, and now the top three are nose to tail. Musgrave mimics Rusty from the lap prior, and as they roll in the turn three, caution. Allison and Sachs have spun in turn two. Whoever wins this race to the line will have the restart advantage to try and win the upcoming three lap dash. Musgrave by half a car length will be able to control the pace and try and win his first career race along with the prestigious 200 grand bounty. Three laps, here we go.
insulated by drivers looking for their first career wins, Wallace rolls the bumper of Musgrave into three, but can't find a gap. Two at the line. The close battle with two to go makes the record 150,000 attendance crowd stand up to watch this finish. A suicide dive by Rusty in the one and Musgrave has to give to him, but he rolls to the top. Ward Burton has now sailed into the storm and wants to brave the choppy waters following Rusty past Musgrave. And now, the white flag. Rusty, the man who claimed the largest purse on the circuit, is now 1.5 miles away from trying to claim yet another record payday. Ward finally clears, and now he has one last shot in the turn three at payday. Both men ask how brave they want to be, and put it all on the line in the final corners. Ward is right there, but it isn't enough, and Rusty Walls hits the jackpot and breaks Gordon's streak with his 29th career victory. And now while Humpy Wheeler may be 200 grand poorer, he has created yet another night that will live in infamy at Charlotte North Speedway. Three racers are left, and NASCAR charges in the Rockingham, North Carolina after a big week for the sport. Bobby Hamilton sits on the pole with Dale Earnhardt who is outside, along with Jimmy Spencer and John Andretti behind them for the top four. As the pace car pulls off, the field takes the green. Bobby Hamilton gets an early advantage with Jimmy Spencer in second and Davey Allison in third. Through the opening seven laps, Hamilton leads till he is passed by Spencer, who is followed through by Allison and Marlin, slotting him back to fourth. He eventually takes back third before the front four runs single file till pit stops a halfway. Allison and Spencer cycle out side by side with Davey eventually taking the point and trying to book it through the lap traffic. Davey holds on through the challenges of traffic and claims his 34th career victory. And with two races left, here are your points. Jeff Gordon has the possibility to do something he has been setting up to do for the last 10 weeks. Lock up the championship. A points lead of 322 coming in gives him the ability to clinch with a finish of 38th or better the championship. And with only 40 cars running, things are looking promising for Gordon, who only has to outlast two cars to win it all. But Gordon is looking for more than that. He wants to win this race as well. But he's going to have to overcome the reigning king of Phoenix, Davey Allison. Allison has won four consecutive races here and starts on the pole yet again for today as well. Hamilton has another front row start and Terry Labonte starts third with Hutch Strickland aligned with him in fourth. As the pace car pulls off, it uncages the field for the green. The field races hard for the opening laps, with Davey finally clearing Hamilton for the lead on the backstretch on lap 3. The field eventually single files out after 5 laps. Allison, however, is dethroned by Rusty Wallace who passes him with various others on lap 8. Wallace begins to run away from new 2nd place runner Terry Labonte in 2nd until pit stops on lap 20. Rusty reclaims the lead and establishes a 2.5 second lead with about 7 to go. But suddenly, Dale Earnhardt begins charging with 8 to go. He's 3 seconds back. Six to go, he's 2.5 seconds back. With four to go, he's 1.8 back. He flies past drivers running behind him and is chasing his rival, Rusty Wallace. Two to go, and the gap is 7 tenths. Dale wants to win his first race in 1995, and he wants to do it badly. White flag, and he can almost taste Rusty's rear end. One little bump would be all it takes. Into three and four, he applies the pressure, but Rusty runs up wide to get the runoff exit. And to the checkered flag, Rusty claims it. And Dale Earnhardt comes up one position short again in 1995. And behind the battle was Jeff Gordon in third, who officially claims the championship 
over Bobby Hamilton. Atlanta Motor Speedway, the end of the 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup Series season. Jeff Gordon has already clinched the championship, but many drivers are still looking to cap off 1995 with one last win. Dale Earnhardt and Ricky Rudd have gone winless so far. Both have shot to continue their more than decade-long win streak at Atlanta today. With Dale Earnhardt starting second, he has the best shot of the two, and Gordon claims the pole for the last race in 1995. Behind them is Musgrave and Shepard in row two. And with all that, the final green flag of 1995 is about to go out. Gordon gets the lead early and begins to pull away. He holds the lead until pit stops at halfway. Gordon has a slow stop and loses the lead to teammate Terry Labonte and Bobby Hamilton. Hamilton has the lead, but Terry stalks him with seven to go. Labonte is on the rear bumper of Hamilton, looking for a way past, and finally goes low on him. They race side by side off a of four until, caution. Jeff Gordon has broke and stalled on the racetrack. They tow his car back to the pit to see what the issue is and now, his teammate is gonna get a two lap shootout to see if he can claim victory over Bobby Hamilton. Here we go. Hamilton runs the defensive top groove through three and four to hold them off. Single file through one and two, Labonte is going to wait to the last corner to make his move. Heading down the back stretch into turn three, it's going to be another classic Atlanta finish. He dies low side by side and edges him in the middle of the corner. He nearly clears, but Hamilton smashes the gas on exit, and it's going to come right down to the line to see who wins. In an absolutely barn burner of finish. Terry Labonte claims his 17th career victory and puts a period on 1995. A season that went out with a bang. Even though Bobby Hamilton didn't win the title, his Herculean fight against Gordon was spectacular. And 1995 is officially over. And now we turn our attention to 1996.